Good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your metal market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday. We're at the 27th of February, 2024, and the time right now just after 5:40 p.m. Central Time. Interesting day. We saw today that the heads of uh, Congress, uh, two from the House of Representatives, two from the Senate, met with the president. And then afterwards, I guess Mike Johnson held back for a private one-on-one -on -one with the president. Uh, he said it was a meeting. And of course, the president said they had a brief encounter afterwards. Uh, it's politics as usual. The big question for all of us is whether or not they are separating getting a budget deal done to uh, prevent some of the government agencies on Friday from shutting down or not. I think that they will not agree on money for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, unless it's tied to the border and under the current policies the president has, nobody's getting anything uh, for that. So the big question is, did they figure out a way to separate money for our budget and keep the rest separate? That's how I'm viewing it. Could they tie it all together? Of course they could, it's politics, but I have a feeling they're just so far apart that nothing's gonna get done. I'm gonna repeat, I have zero idea why the president is being so stubborn on the border. All you need to do is look at all the crime in the country going on right now, and I am not saying all immigrants are bad, but we have a lot of illegals creating crime. That's fact in the news, all right. When we look, we saw the stock market uh, recovered today. You know, what's going on there is a consolidation and a broadening out of buying. I don't know if that buying's at a top or if the buying is smart and the market's going to advance more. There's just no way yet to tell on that, but that was the action today. When we take a look at what we have tomorrow, you get the Mortgage Bankers Association numbers, interest rates have soared, so I'm not looking for anything that's helpful out of that. And we're going to get a second look at the fourth quarter GDP numbers, all right? The big number that's coming out is gonna be Thursday when we get a look at the PCE indices, seeing how inflation went. They think overall it went up four tenths. The market's already got that somewhat discounted. And then after that, starting next week, remember a week from Friday, we're gonna get jobs report and all those other good things. And that really is gonna set some tones as to where we're at. But when you look at the market, that is the feel that uh, the market has about it, that the mega caps, the mega, mega tech stocks, I didn't want to say mega caps, mega tech stocks have paused for a little bit. Other stocks around it going up, the money, there's plenty of money on the sidelines. I don't know if anyone's selling out of those big boys or not. We saw that uh, Apple today, and I got to say that, threw in the towel on building an electronic autonomous car. How many billions did they throw into that baby? 2,000 people working on it, and they got a memo. They're stopping doing it. Uh, gold, again, still fighting at this 240 level. Silver market losing a little bit, but not doing too much. Uh, the copper bounced away the other day from the low 380 area up here. So if we take a look at gold, and, let, and let's go right there. The battleground's crystal clear to me on a weekly chart of closes, it's the 2025 area. So what will the market do there is gonna be the big question. When we look at a daily bar chart, you can see how the market has come up, fighting a battle there. The pattern is still bullish. And notice that in order to break the uptrend, you've gotta take out that 2025 area. Just interesting how it's all tying together. And we have two numbers that have now converged on themselves. The 18 day average of closes at 2035.90 and 2033.60, the 100 day average. So I expect to see some buying against that. If you take out that 2025.40, I think the bulls will abandon their long idea. I don't think that throws out a sell signal, by the way, because you'd have a higher high and a lower low, but that's where I'm looking for the support. Support. And the question is on rallies, where can you go? What's happening are the Bollinger Bands are wrapping their arms around price. Now it's the top band collapsing much faster than the bottom band. You can see you're getting a gradual arc here, whereas this is now pulling itself down 
and it, it's going to drop fairly fast if prices don't go up. So right now you're breaking to the tune. You're 20, 64, 70. You were 20, 70, 70 and 20, 74. So it's about $4 a day uh, right now that you're dropping. So easily, you know, the day after you can be in the 20, 60 area. So we'll see what it does from there. And when I look at momentum, you have a market that is in overbought territory. And I don't think that attracts a lot of new buying. That's the problem on uh, the, the support area. And you're reading over 71. In fact, over 70, I think, is overbought. When we look at the gold-silver ratio, you can see that it's climbing back up, whereas gold's stronger than silver. The old top was uh, closer to the 91 level, but we're getting up there. As you can see in the silver market, void of a trend, lots of sideways action. But this is the type of action where big moves come out of this. Which way is going to be the question? But Right now, that's like a pipe, and in the pipe, you got a spring, and you just keep winding it. And this pipe has wound itself now all of February. It hasn't really gone anywhere at all, just sideways action. A move comes out of that. It won't stay there that long, so be ready for something out of that. In the copper market, one more push down takes you into all the support starting at, let's call it the 380.95 area, 380.65 and the 379.60 area, all these moving averages, but you wouldn't be in an uptrend. Now, one of the things copper and other metals are also waiting on is when and if China announces more economic stimulus. They had said, if you'll recall, when they had their People's uh, Congress, that they were going to do so in March. Well, March will be here in three days. So are they going to do it over the weekend? They're going to do it later? None of us know. But that's what I think the market's waiting on. So as I said, I, I think that rally that you got when the uh, Chinese traders returned from the lunar holiday a week ago Friday, that's run its course. And now the market's waiting for the next piece of action. In the platinum market, still acting a bit bearish. I wouldn't be surprised if the pros are selling it with stops over that high, looking to see if they can push it into the 875 area, even if you come back and take out this high. And that high, uh, we can look at it. I forgot, I didn't memorize where it was. It's at 911.80. So even if you took that out, you'd end up with a lower and low, then higher high, and a lot of resistance from 923.60 right into the upper band uh, there of 920. So those two numbers are going to be resistance points. Last in the dollar index, again, the Bollinger Band's wrapping their arms around price. The market has been caught now for one, two, three, four, four days and that, well, we're just open tonight. Against the 100-day average, you bounce up towards the uh, 18. You don't go anywhere through it. The market turns bullish, in my opinion, if you get over 103.97 and a half and close over 104.07, the 18-day average of closes. We're having a lot of fun in the morning subscriber videos. We've been throwing out a lot of trades there, more than I've actually been putting out at night because the setups have been happening first thing in the morning. I put those out. I record at 5, 5, 10 in the morning, a.m. Central Time. I have viewers all over the world, so we want to get that out. The markets are coming alive by 6 a.m. Central Time. A lot of people think, oh, they have volume all night long. It doesn't work that way. People sleep and the volume starts coming in. Like I'm saying, probably six, seven in the morning, that's when you're really getting things rocking that central time. So I cover, and the charts all look like that. They'll be jet black with all the different studies on them. I, I explain it, detail it, and give you as a chartist, I'm hoping, an idea of what I'm seeing, why I'm seeing it, and maybe you have your own idea and you're going, you know, that, that was the push I needed. That does make sense. I rarely look for a day trade, okay? That's not what it's about. It's more position trading. Today, it was just lucky. I mean, we had sold meal on a rally this morning and got out late in the day, and it was big, all right? There's also losers, all right? Please understand that. I balance it. I don't mean to, but it gets balanced one way or the other. Nobody's right on every trade, but money management, a lot of common sense, 
uh, trying to be conservative. You do as best as you can in this market. And I do the same thing in the spider ETFs. And I do that at nine in the morning. I wait for the first half hour of trading in the spider ETFs because overnight trade, you know, there's, there's an overnight market. Once the markets close officially in New York at 3 p.m., uh, don't go by, that's 4 p.m. Eastern time. There's aftermarkets and they go all the way through. Well, a lot of that blends into the first half hour of trade I've learned over the years. And by nine, all the government reports are out. And that is when I start recording because I want the traders by the next 40 minutes, 50 minutes, to be able to get ideas from me and see what I think the day holds. And it works out the same type of charts, same type of ideas. Uh, we have been in some trades there since December. So don't think that this is all short term. It is nowhere near it. It's not intended to be short term. Either you hit your objective or you're getting stopped. Go to irapstein.com under the word what? Research. That's where this all is. You can move your cursor up here as well, and that'll take you into the research area. But give it a try. I think you'll find it interesting, a lot of fun, entertaining to watch, and you don't have to watch everything. I break everything down in the videos on the website so that you'll see sections of it. So it can be the tech sec uh, sector and the spiders. It'll be different ones for the futures. It'll be uh, the stock indices, the interest rates. I break it down very easy for you to watch. I'm Ira. You have your a good evening. I'll talk to you all first thing in the morning.